those days that you don't want to do anything? Were you too tired, too sore? You just don't feel like it? Those days? Those are the days that count. Remember the time when you honestly gave up on the possibilities of the uniqueness that you had inside. Remember there was a time that you complained so much, but yet did so little. So impose on yourself this self-development of being in charge, taking charge of your life and your health and your future and your responsibilities and all the rest. Take charge of your health. You're the one that's responsible for it. It's not a requirement of society that you not have a heart attack and take care of your family. That's not a requirement of society, but you must make it a requirement of yourself. When you want this thing as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you find a way. It does not take talent. You don't have to be talented, right? You don't have to be gifted. You don't have to be the quickest, the strongest. You don't have to be the most intelligent to get to where I am. That's what you gotta do. You just gotta grind though. You're grind, you gotta outgrind. And if you're not willing to step outside of your comfort zone, if you're not willing to understand the principles and the possibilities that you have within yourself, then everything that you are thriving for, everything that you are hungry for, will soon come to an end. But listen to me when I say there is always hope. You have to take control and attack it head on. Because as soon as you do this, just once, just like a muscle lifting weights, you become stronger. You become comfortable being uncomfortable. And before you know it, you become a machine and nothing, nothing on the outside can affect you because your mind is trying to beat it down. Never run, always fight. Take control of your life and you'll change it forever. Make good choices today so you can have no regrets tomorrow. Be brave today so you have no regrets tomorrow. Live fully today so you have no regrets tomorrow. No more regrets, no turning back. I'm all in, all in for my goal. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit during the process. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. Champions keep going when they don't have anything left in their tank. Success and failure are not giant events. They don't just show up. You don't just suddenly become successful or suddenly have this cataclysmic event that makes you fail. It may look that way, but failure comes from all the little things. It's failure to make the call. It's failure to check the books. It's failure to say, I'm sorry. It's failure to push yourself to do things physically that you don't want to do. And all those little failures day after day come together until one day some cataclysmic event happens and you blame that. That event happened because you missed all the little stuff. Do you agree with me? And success, by the way, is not some overnight event. It's all these little things. Success is having a vision. Success is making it compelling. Success is really seeing it, feeling it every day with strong enough reasons. Success is feeling the sense that I'm here to grow and I'm here to give something to the world more than just myself. All the little stuff. That's where success comes from. And in business, it comes from delivering more than anybody could imagine. All those little things add up, people go, wow, that's who I want to do business with. It's true in any area of your life. You have to actually show up every day and inch yourself forward toward these dreams. And not only show up every day and once in a while inch yourself, I mean every day you have to actually take an action that moves you forward. Not just research, not just thinking. Look, the power of an intention is great, but without any initiative, it's dead, right? A dream is great, but without any movement, it's dead. You have to be moving towards every day. You can send an email every day, you can make a call every day, you can write something every day, you can create something every day, you can contribute something every day, but it has to be daily, otherwise it will never become actualized. The highest performers in the world didn't get there because they were lucky. They worked at it longer than everyone else. They had a better work ethic 
And it's not that they necessarily always worked harder, they worked smarter because they were doing the research. They were taking the time to visualize how they would be distinct, different, how they would survive the tough times. They, they really kept at it. Keep every single day momentum going. And if you don't do that, there's no chance. The goal, if you own a business, and I would assume a lot of your viewers are business yeah. owners or, or getting started in business, no matter how good you are in business, think about this. The one universal rule that idiots in finance know is diversification. It's the only free lunch. You've got to diversify. Because if you put all your eggs in one basket, no matter how good the basket is, one day that real estate market, that stock market, that bond market, that collectibles market, whatever you invest in, Ray Dalio showed me statistically, it'll drop 50 to 70% on a day. Now, if you're later in life when that happens, it's over for you. Right. So you have to diversify, and yet most people, they know real estate, so they do it, or they know stocks, so they do it, or they grew up with their, hand, their parents flipping things, and it's the wrong thing to do. So you've got to diversify in order for you to be able to truly succeed, and that's why when you own a business, yeah. if you put all your money in your business, which is what most of us do naturally, <laughs> see a lot of risk. Yeah. you put all your eggs in one basket, and there's things that can happen. I mean. You know, you're, let's say you spent 20 years and you figured out how to put together the ultimate map, you know, and you remember Garmin came out with this thing called the Tom Tom. I don't know if you remember, you used to yeah. put on your, are you old enough to remember that? You used of to course. put on your phone? Yeah, yeah. Or you used to put on your dash. Uh, dash. Yeah. Cost a hundred bucks. Yeah. It was a breakthrough. They were making like a hundred million or something. Or, yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. Six months later, what happened? The iPhone came out with That's Google Maps. <laughs> These little bastards, excuse my French, came out with it, put Google Maps, put their own map on here, and it costs how much? Zero. What's that gonna do to your business when someone takes your product or serve and gives it away for free? So I always tell people, competition happens, technology happens, what you must do is have a second business with, yeah. no, with no moving parts, no people, no time. Maybe it takes you Two, two, three days a year for two or three hours after you've read the book, you put it in place and you measure it two or three times a year. That's it. Yeah. Go on with your life. Now if there's a trouble in your business, you're financially set. I, in my life, have 31 companies now. We have, you know, what do we have? 1,200 employees, seven different industries. We do five billion in sales. I mean, I, that used to be, you know, me and my seminar business. It's grown geometrically. Wow. But with all those moving parts, the only way I've been able to succeed is because I've taken every one of those businesses and I've diversified my assets so that when things were in trouble, I still had enough economics to take care of myself and keep the business going. So everybody needs to create a money machine that works while you sleep, mm -hmm. that doesn't have moving parts, and that's what this is really about. Now, some of these are in the book called The Book of Joy by the Dalai Lama and Desmond Tutu. I highly recommend it. And some of the other ones that I learned living as a monk include four key habits, thankfulness, inspiration, meditation, and exercise. So that's how I view happiness. I see it as a result of practicing these daily rituals, these daily habits that can create happiness in our lives. Now, from a more long-term point of view of happiness, it comes from purpose and meaning. It doesn't just come from pleasure and joy. And purpose and meaning come from a concept known as Dharma in Sanskrit, which is where you find this beautiful intersection between your passion, your strengths, and your compassion. The ability to serve with what you're naturally skilled at. I want to talk to you about consciously designing your life. It's an idea that I see you live day in and day out. Thank you. Um, everything in your world seems completely integrated. The people that you hang out with, the things that you do to have the energy, the things you focus on to make sure that you remain excited, like it all feels um, like there's nothing that's sort of by accident in your life. So what's the whole concept and how do you actually pull it off? You know, I think I talked about this last time, a little bit about my car accident. So when I was a 19 year old kid, I had this car accident and prior to the car accident, I had been suicidal. And, you know, coming out of breakup with the woman I loved, I, I lost my identity in that, became suicidal, had the car accident and it was just powerful juxtaposition because here I am suicidal, want to take my life. And then I get an accident that says, oh no, I, I don't want to die. And it forced me to consider how I will evaluate my life at the end of my life. And that has always been the driving force for me is, I realized at the end of my life, for me personally, I'm gonna ask these questions to evaluate, was I happy with my life? And those for me are, did I live? Did I love? Did I matter? Which isn't, for some people are watching like, so what? But I was 19, 
and it's set in me. And so if you think about it, you know, that was what, 23 years ago? If you wake up every day with a super clear intention and reverence for life, realizing how short it is, you absolutely get your act together. Well, I think, first of all, it's valuing people. Uh, you know, you have an incredible, incredible work here, and every person here in this studio makes it happen. And um, one is too small of a number to achieve greatness. And, and the moment that you understand that the people that you have around you, they're, you know, they're either your number one asset or to be honest with you, they could be your number one liability. But the moment that you understand that and begin to value people, I think that is what creates the connection. Because the moment that, um, I think we all know, don't you, Tom, think, don't you think you know when a person values you and, and when a person doesn't sure. value you? And, and so I think that giving value to people and expressing that to them is the common ground that builds relationships. And so, yeah, when I came in the studio, I wanted to meet everybody because you've got an incredible successful program and I want to meet the people who help you be who you are. I love that. Uh, it begins there. Because if I don't truly value people, I won't add value to them. You don't add value to people that you don't value. You don't add value to anything you don't value. So every day I value people, that's where it starts. But then every day I, I think of ways to add value to people. So I mean, I'll look at my calendar and I look at my agenda today and I realize I was going to be with you. And, and I think, well, okay, how can I add value to you? Uh, what can I do for impact theory that'll, you know, just help? Because again, if you're constantly adding value to people, you're going to be of great value to people. So, okay, I value people, think of ways to add value to people. Then I look for ways to add value to people. When I'm in the setting, I'm looking for, okay, what can I do? What can I say? And, and but we, we, what we, what we see is what we look for. And so if I'm looking to add value, guess what? I'll see ways to add value to it. Somebody else might be beside you, not add value at all to you, but, but, but I look for ways. And then number four, I, I, I do things that add value to people. And then number five, I encourage others to add value to people. And I've just lived that simple formula. I do that every day of my life. It's very simple. And I try to help other people do that. Understanding that if they do that, wherever they are, leadership culture, not a leadership culture, doesn't really matter. They'll begin to influence and begin to lead people and they'll begin to make a difference in people's lives. And I think that's essential. But I think you have to be intentional and I think you have to be consistent. Consistency compounds. But how do you like? How do you really turn that into a roadmap and start yeah. doing the right things? Because one, I think a lot of people could waste a moment like that, the eye-opening thing. A lot That's of people true. could do it for That's a true. while, and yeah. then without without concrete things to do on a daily basis. Like what I really want people to understand yeah. in um, all the research that you've done on high performance and all that, it, it comes down to things that you can do. It comes down to things that you can teach. It comes yeah. down to things that people can. Um, structure their life around and, and what I want to dive into today is that structure. Yeah, you know what's funny is like, I think you nailed it. People take an eye-opening experience and some don't do anything with it and some people grow from it. And I came back from that experience, I was in college, and prior to coming back, I was a depressed kid, the sad kid, the kind of the lonely kid, kind of the pull away from the world kid because I was hurt. I came back and I had this new intention to live. So I wanted to meet people and talk to people. And they're like, who are you? And anytime you change your life, usually people are like, what's wrong with you? So I was like, what's wrong with you? But I was like, I'm gonna change. Because I knew I didn't want misery anymore. I didn't want suffering. I didn't want sadness. I didn't want negative thinking. I didn't want poor quality of relationships. I didn't want to feel horrible. So I began the quest of, well, how do I not feel horrible? So I started reading, first I started personal development, self-help then jumped into spirituality, then jumped into psychology, then jumped into neuroscience, then jumped into sociology, then jumped into leadership, and spent every week for 23 years, I've read a book, a week on one of those topics for 23 years. You can't go to the future holding on to the biology of your past. Decide what thoughts you can bring to your future. Write them down. Thoughts like, I can't, it's too hard. I'll never change. I'll start tomorrow. What's wrong with me? It's someone else's fault. 
Decide on what behaviors or actions or unconscious habits you have to change. How do you talk? Do you complain? Do you blame? Do you make excuses? Do you feel sorry for yourself? Just become so conscious of those behaviors that you'll never go unconscious again. And lastly, you have to decide what emotions no longer belong in your future. That means if you want to be wealthy, you can't take lack. If you want to be healthy, you can't take insecurity or fear. You got to begin to condition your body to a new mind.